Okay, guys. Um, so I'm gonna just get straight into the examples problems for this one. Uh, here we have two example. Like we have an example of an irregular figure, something that we can't like just get one straightforward volume for. We're gonna have to break this up into two different solid shapes before we can like actually tell what the volume for the entire thing is gonna be. Um, so this one is gonna make a lot of sense because what it's gonna require us to do is like break this up into two different shapes. So what I'm gonna do is call the first one a cube and the second one a rectangular prism. Um, and then we're gonna do the dimensions for both. So I have my cube and then I have my rectangular prism. And we're just gonna like define the, the dimensions of both of them. So. I'm noticing that the cube has um, nine foot width, nine foot length, and nine foot height. Um, and the rectangular prism has 10 foot width, 12 foot length, and three foot height. So I'm just gonna separate those two um, on my board in your notebook the same way. So length, width, height, nine, nine, nine. This is a good chance to just write this down in your notebook because like you can like think of this as if it's class and we're doing it together. 10, 12, three, and they're all in the units of feet, which is like something that's important to know, but um, so we can do that. I'm gonna take this off my screen now so we can just kind of like see what this should look like. Um, and as we're coming back into it. So um, first thing I'll do is the cube. You gotta remember that volume is length times width times height, which just makes the most sense. You first write down your formula and then you plug everything in. So now volume is nine times nine times nine. And then we multiply nine times nine, which is 81. And then we bring down the rest. And then we do 81 times nine, which is gonna give us our final volume. The volume for the cube, hey Siri, what's 81 times nine? Hey Siri, what's 81 times nine? That would be 729. So the cube is 729 cubic feet. And then we'll do the exact same thing for the rectangular prism. And when we get the volume for that one too, we'll just add them together. So I have volume equals length times width times height. And now that I have my formula, I know that I'm doing the right thing. I have everything I need for my formula. I'm just going to plug in the information and solve. So volume equals 10 times 12 times 3. And this is going to be a little easier for me to do. 10 times 12, I know that 1 times 12 is 12. So 10 times 12 is just 120. And then I multiply that times 3. I know that 3 times 12 is 36. So 3 times 120 is 360. So this is 360 cubic feet. I'm not done because it's asking me for the total volume of like if these two shapes were together. So you can just go over to like any anywhere on your page. This is where you're gonna like put the last put the last little bit of your answer. So I'm gonna do 729 plus 360, add them together, and that's gonna tell me that my total volume is 1,800 and uh, 1,089 square feet. Um, and that would be the answer that you would put. So you have the volume for each shape as you decompose it. That's what like what that's what it means when we break it up. Um, it's just it, this is what happens when you decompose it, and now you have it when you add them together. That's basically what today's lesson is going to be about. I'm going to do one more practice problem. Go ahead and like get a fresh sheet on, on your page, pause the video, and be ready to go in about 30 seconds. <clears throat> All right, so example two. Um, sheesh, sorry. So example two basically uh, looks like this. All right, we have this irregular shape that we need to find the volume for. And so to do that, we have to just decompose again. Um, this tells us a lot, like the shape is irregular, but it gives us a lot of information in it. Um, the first thing that we notice is that we can split it up by this line. And so now we're dealing with technically two different shapes. So we have one shape 
that is defined as a rectangular prism. It has the dimensions of being 10 centimeters by five centimeters. And because this side is five centimeters high, so is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So the entire thing is five centimeters high. The dimensions for the rectangular prism, I'm gonna go over here and write it. It is five centimeters long, 10 centimeters wide, five centimeters high. And then my cube just has fives all around. It's five centimeters by five centimeters by five. So that was gonna be a lot easier to find the volume for. And then once we break it up, we find the volume and we add them together. Um, again, volume equals length times width times height. And then we plug in the information times five times five. You know, that's 25 times five. The final volume is 125 centimeters cubed. Same for this one. Let me see that. Okay, volume equals length times width times height. And then the volume is equal to five centimeters times 10 times five. And then we plug it all in. 50 times five, the final volume. Five times five is 25. Five times 50 is 250 cubic centimeters. And to make it all make sense in the end, once we have the volume for the cube and one for the rectangular prism, we just add them together. So I have 250 plus 125. That means that the entire irregular shape is 375 centimeters cubed. Um, one more problem that we're gonna do that I'm gonna show you as a part of the examples video, and then I'm gonna release you guys to do this on your own. All right, so I already have example three queued up. I'm gonna show you guys what it's like here, and then I'm gonna shoot back to my board. Um, if this is too much of a complicated sketch for you, then like you're just gonna write down the dimensions. Um, but here's what it is. We have a really irregular shape that looks like a U, or like a really big house or something. And it has two layers, so it's two units, two units high. Um, two of the sides, the left and the right side, go three meters long. The middle side goes one. It's only one. It's only one unit long. Um, and so I've kind of like done my example. Um, I've done my sketch up, and I've also like kind of notated all of this. So I, what I did was break break this up into three different spaces. Um, here I have the left side, which is, I'm gonna mark with the red. So my left side. And then I have the center, which I'm gonna color with black. And then I have the right side, which I'm gonna color with green. Okay, and basically what this is telling me, uh, what I can do from this is I can find the volume for each of these pieces individually and then add them together. So the left side I'm noticing has the following dimensions. Um, the left side is three units long because if this unit is three, then this line is three, then this line is three, and then this one is three. So it's three units long. Um, it's one unit wide and it's two units high. The same is for the black. The black is probably the easier one. It is one unit long, one unit wide, two units high. And then we have the right side, which has the same dimensions as the left side. It is three meters long, one unit wide, and two units high. And we can just easily use this to find the volume for each one and then add them together at the end. So um, if I'm thinking about the left side, I'm gonna start with volume equals length times width times height. Get into the habit of doing this and then plugging it in so that you don't like end up making really silly mistakes. 
three times two, six, the volume equals six. Again, length times width times height. And I'm plugging it in, one times one times two. One times two, two. The volume equals two for the middle side. And then, Length times width times height. Let me move it over some. And it's the same. Three times one times two. Three times two, six. The volume equals six. And then to find our, find our final answer, the total volume, we have to add all of these together. equals six plus two plus six. Six plus two is eight, eight plus six is 14. So we're talking about 14 cubic units, units to the third power. All right, if you take your time and you show your work, this is not gonna be that hard of a thing for you to grasp. It's just you like, you think about these like little Lego pieces. You can break these down. And if you can break them down and like figure out the dimensions for them, then you're gonna be very successful. Just think about how you would break down Lego pieces because that's all we did here, which is why like the color coding works for this because like it's just thinking about how can I break this up so I can find the volume of it in small pieces before I add it together, okay? Um, hit me in the comments if you have any questions, you know how to reach me, office hours are still 11 to 12. Nobody's getting in there, but um, hopefully y'all do. We y'all got help instead of calling me at eight o'clock but I'm not gonna answer the phone. All right. Do well, be expedient. All right.